Now let's take this to the next level. What if we also want to bind the opacity property of the label to the value of the slider? So let's try another binding expression. Opacity, we use curly braces for markup extensions. The first markup extension is binding. Now here we need to specify the source object equals another markup extension. We use X reference to reference the slider. Then we set the path to the value property of the slider. Now we don't need a string format because opacity is just a number between zero to one. Now let me run this application and here's the result. Note that the label is a little bit grayed out. And if we move the slider to the left, it becomes transparent, or if we go to the right, it becomes opaque. But look at our binding expression. These bindings are a little bit noisy. In both cases, we are using the slider as the source object. So let me show you how to remove this noise and make this code a little bit cleaner and more maintainable. We can set the binding context attribute of the label to our slider. So again, we use markup extension, X reference, slider. Now slider will be the source object for any properties of the label, which means in our binding expressions for the text and opacity properties, we don't need to repeat this line. Remove, remove. Also, we can take this to the next level and remove path equals value and just add value like this. So we can put this on the same line, binding to value. And same here. That's definitely cleaner. Now let's take this to the next level. I wanna add a box view. A box view is a box filled with a color. So above the label, I'm gonna add a box view, set its color to, let's say green. And again, I wanna bind its opacity property to the value of the slider. So opacity equals markup extension, binding. We set the source, another binding expression, X reference slider and path equals value. Let's run this application. Okay, here's the result. Again, you see there's a little bit of duplication in this code. Both the box view and the label are referencing the slider as their binding context. So we can basically move this binding context setup from the label to our stack layout, the container for box view and the label. And this will be inherited by all the elements inside stack layout, which means we can simplify this binding expression for the opacity of the box view, remove the source and the path. So this is how we set up data binding. Now, finally, we don't really need this X name for the label because we have not referenced it anywhere. So we can delete it. All right, next I'm gonna show you how to deal with device differences.